Hi, this is Warren from the sales engineering team here at Datadog. And today I'd like to walk you through how to set up APM manual instrumentation for your Python application. While Datadog covers many of the popular libraries and frameworks used, you might be interested in manually instrumenting your application, whether that be to get some additional visibility into your business logic, or because of custom tooling you might wanna get some insight into. To many people, manual instrumentation sounds intimidating, and you might think you'll have to uh, manually instrument the passing of trace headers, span metadata, things like that between different parts of your code base. However, by using Datadog's tracing client, we'll actually be able to handle much of the underlying logic for you. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here in this following example. Here we have a um, simple Python to do app. Um, nothing fancy here. Ultimately, we have a um, application layer where we're instantiating a Flask application. We have some routing here where we're hitting the get to do endpoints, um, ultimately bringing us to some business logic that we have here. This business logic then does a query to our uh, database file that exists over here. In this case, it's uh, SQLite. Now, in order to get visibility um, into your Python application, all you need to do is import the Datadog tracing clients, and then from there, uh, instrument your code uh, by adding just a few lines of code. Now, it's actually um, very simple to get visibility where you'd like. All you need to do is add a decorator to your actual function calls, um, as you can see here. So in this case, we're wrapping list to do with at tracer.wrap, um, where we list the operation name, in this case, flask.request, the service, in this case, flask, the resource being um, get to do, and then the span type being a web app. It could also be something like a database, um, a cache, anything custom, things like that. Now, now that we've added this code, if we make a um, request at localhost, go here, you can see we already have some requests. We hit refresh, goes to the dog platform, And then from here, right off the bat, we'll be able to get insight into total execution time of that particular call. In this case, we have information into um, the flask.request uh, operation name, the resource, the duration it took, as well as the process ID. And while this is all well and good, we might be interested in getting some additional visibility beyond that. And what we can do is actually get that set up really easily in the um, code. So in this case here, we're going to append some additional metadata to that actual um, span. And all we need to do is uncomment this code here. We'll talk about this. Ultimately, what this code is doing is that if a trace is uh, span is being generated, we're going to append some key value tag data to it. So for demonstration purposes, we have flask.key value. We can also have something like flask.endpoint being to do, the HTTP endpoint being get, status code being 200, and then um, the URL even being the URL here. If we hop back to the DivDog platform, we make an additional query. What we'll see here is all of the associated uh, tag data that I have appended to this um, trace now. Now, this is really good because A, you get some additional context into what exactly is um, going on with this uh, call by having the metadata here. And then B, we also have the ability to kind of query on this information uh, into other parts of the Datadog platform. Now, that we have that set up, we might be interested in instrumenting our business layer uh, logic that we have up here. And in order to get that set up, all we need to do is add that additional wrapper, uh, our trace decorator once again. In this case, um, we're having the operation, mean, operation name being to do service.list, uh, service being flask, resource being to do, span type being web, we hit save. You can see here, Datadog will automatically pass the trace context between the different parts of your code base. If we hop back to the platform and we make an additional query, we'll be able to see that right here with this uh, additional piece of uh, span uh, attached to this um, main um, span here. 
And of course, to kind of finish it all off, we also want to get visibility into the query that's actually being made on our SQLite database, as well as the you know execution time it took. And to do that, we'll hop back over to our code. And again, the same idea here, we add that same decorator to that um, method, as we can see here. So in this case, I can hit uh, save. The operation is going to be a little different. In this case, we're doing a SQLite query, uh, the service being uh, SQLite, the resource being the endpoint or the query that we're hitting. And then finally, the span type being SQL or you know database. And now that we have that saved, we can switch back over to our uh, Datadog platform, make another query, wait for a trace to come in. And then right off the bat there, if we click into this, we have some insights into the execution time associated with that database call. So by just adding a few lines of code, we have the ability to get insights from that request as it comes in at the application layer through to the business logic, through to the uh, database call that's actually being made. Um, here, all of this information is really great because um, we'll have some um, context into how long parts of our code base took to run. And then we'll also be able to correlate this data within the metrics and logs into other parts of the Datadog platform. Now, this effectively covers everything I wanted to show you here today. Um, I hope this illuminates a little bit of how easy it is to get um, manual instrumentation up with the Datadog Tracing clients. So thank you for listening and have a great day.